In this short tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to value a bond. And we're going to look at a worked example to do this. So we've got a five year, $1,000 face value bond that's going to pay 5% interest. And I've underlined the two key parts, and you need to know the words that we use to describe these. So $1,000, we can talk about this as the capital return. So in five years' time, you're going to get $1,000 paid back to you when the bond is repaid. And then you're going to get a recurring cash flow of 5% as interest. So we've got two parts, and each of these two parts is going to play into the valuation and needs to be calculated separately. So in theory, valuing a bond is really simple. You just have to add two numbers together. So the value of the bond is the present value of the capital returned plus the present value of the cash flows. And so when we talk about present value, if I was to ask you, would you rather have $1 now or $1.20 in 10 years time? The sensible decision is probably to have the dollar now because you could invest that for 10 years and it's probably going to be worth a lot more than $1.20. So we take the final value and we have to work backwards to work out what getting it now would be worth compared to whether we want to wait to get it in the future. And there's a discounting process that you have to go through to come up with the present values. And the present values is where the complexity comes in. So we've got our bond in our example and the problem is the, the value of the bond depends on the assumptions that you make. And we call this thing the discount rate. So we take a rate of return and we say we're going to work backwards using this rate. And when we use different rates, we get totally different bond values. So we take a 2% discount rate. The bond is worth $1,140.40. However, if we take a 10% discount rate, it smashes the value of the bond down to $810.46. And this discount rate is really the answer to the question, what price would I have to pay to get this return? So if you wanted a 10% return, you'd have to pay $810.46 for the bond. Whereas if you're happy with 2%, so say, you know, the returns in the bank are 2%, then this bond to earn a comparable rate of return you would need to pay that amount. Whereas, you know, if you can get fantastic 10% rates in the bank, you're not going to pay full price with this bond. You need to have a substantial discount in order to increase the return between five, um, above the 5% up to the 10% that you require. So now that you know the theory, let's look at actually doing the calculation. So we're going to start by looking at the present value of the capital return. So this is one of the two parts of the calculation. And this has a formula that looks complicated, but is not actually complicated. And so let's look at what each of these things stands for. So the face value goes on the top. That's a thousand dollar, which is what we call the face value. The discount rate, which you convert from a percentage into a decimal. And then you've got T, which unsurprisingly stands for time. So let's look at our example. So we've got a thousand dollar five year bond at a 10% discount rate. So we take each of these three things and we put it in the equation. So we replace the face value with 1,000. We've replaced the discount rate with 0.1 and the time is five years. So we replace the T in the power with five and you just press the numbers on your calculator and it will come out as the $1,000 present value is $620.92. Cents. And so we're halfway to calculating the value of the bond. So the next part is the present value of the cash flows. And this looks much, much more complicated, but it's actually really simple when you notice the pattern. So the formula is it's the summation of all of the cash flows divided by one plus the discount rate raised to the power T. And so we look at our example and you get this enormous formula. And don't panic when you first look at this. There's actually a simple recurring pattern. So you'll notice that each cash flow, so in this case, it's 5% every year. So you're getting $50 every year. Some bonds have different values, so you'd have not necessarily have the same number on the top. So here you've got 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. So they are the cash flows. And then the bottom number is actually really simple. We've got one because it's the first year plus, and we're doing the same formula and only changing this to two for the second year, 
exactly the same formula, three, four, and five. So all we're doing on the power is just counting up and copying everything over. So we're summing up all of the cash flows discounted by the discount rate, and we're raising it to the power to take account of the fact that there's multiple years that need to be discounted. And if you type all of that into your calculator, you get that the present value of the cash flows is $189.54. And so we've now got the two numbers that we need to calculate the value of the bond. So remember the basic formula, the value is the present value of the capital return plus the present value of the cash flows. So we just add those two numbers together. So if you need to rewind it to see where those numbers came from, go ahead. And so we add those two together and you get the value of the bond. That number should look familiar because that's what it was for the 10% discount rate that we've used in the example. And to summarize, we can put the whole thing into one formula. So we've got the two additions and so you get that formula. I've just taken the two formulas I've given you and you can do it all in one step, particularly if you have a financial calculator. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Now, now you can calculate the value of a bond. And finally, thank you very much for watching.